What's up, everybody? Today, we're actually going to be going through and doing a just kind of review of this 13.20 rundown from Mort Dog. I'll link the video. I know a lot of people, whenever they review this, they normally would go through and watch the video in like 2x speed. This video is really long, so I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to do mine a little bit differently, try and condense it some for everybody, and then do kind of a review at the end. Just to start out, we have some for fun changes with towards the end of every set. They always do a little bit of craziness and we're going to have double portals. So if you go into normal mode, you get to play double portals now. Also, I moved my face cam because look at this face. Jeez, Mort. That's a thumbnail face if I've ever seen one. All right, on to the large traits. We have Bilgewater 5 and 9 getting buffed. I don't know if I agree with 9. 5 definitely needed it. Maybe it'll make the strategist Bilgewater comp a little bit better. 9 kind of felt like you just won most of the time anyways, but I mean, I'm not against it. It's one of those things that you very rarely hit or see, but it's like 9 Noxus, 9 Demacian, you know. Super high vertical, I'm okay with buffing those. Multicaster got reworked, so now they're always only going to cast one additional time. And it's just for each extra multicaster you're playing, it does or it reduces the damage less. That makes sense. And then at four, you get bonus mana. That's interesting. That's interesting because I feel like you don't necessarily need to have like your tier items. Like you don't require a blue buff anymore on your Twisted Fate. But at the same time, I feel like it's probably a net downgrade just because, as far as multicaster reroll goes at least, it's gonna be a net downgrade. Just because before it was three star everything, then you just destroy the board. Now, I don't think three starring everything actually helps as much. We got an Ionian nerf and a Vanquisher nerf down here, by the way. Much needed, I think everybody's sick of playing against that Ionian Vanquisher comp. Rogues got nerfed as well. That's just a 5%, so it's not too much. Shuriman got a buff, 100% needed. Shuriman was terrible through this last patch. And Zahn got a buff. That one's interesting. It's the different chem mods that you can get that got buffed. So it's not everything got buffed, just the different chem mods. Unstable chem tank with bonus XP or HP going up to 40%. That one's a little bit worrisome to me. You know, people got sick of exploding J4s. Maybe you can do that again. All right, so the lower tier champions, Graves, got a pretty major nerf. This is kind of what I was referring to as my title from yesterday's video. Rogues got nerfed really hard here in this patch. We got an Orianna, kind of a, like she got nerfed on the AD, but she got buffed everywhere else. It's kind of a net neutral. They don't want her to be a reroller anyways, just because she's with Piltover. You don't want Piltover reroll re -roll really to be a thing. Set got nerfed. Set's been kind of the premier two cost for a long time, so definitely deserved. Talia got buffed. This one worries me a lot for Double Trouble, specifically, because Double Trouble is still there, and it's been kind of hanging out in the background, but we'll see what happens. It's also interesting that it was just those four at the large changes. So let's go to the three cost champions. Nautilus also got a buff. That one is another unit that's in that Double Trouble comp. That's very worrisome. Darius, Darius got a buff. No longer a straight bot. That's cool. Rek'Sai kind of got a little bit of a rework. So we'll have to see how that goes. I'm not sure if that's just like a net neutral or not. And then it looks like they're buffing every multicaster probably. Other than Twisted Fate. Which Sona should be fun. And then we have the 4 and 5 cost champions. So Aphelios got buffed. Fiora got reworked. So she's no longer untargetable. That's deserved. But she did get buffed to make up for that. That's very good. I wish this had been like this from the beginning. Aatrox, it looks like his darkened HP went down, but as a carry, he went up. I don't know if I agree with this one. Aatrox was already pretty good. Uh, this Gangplank stuff, there's way too much text there. Just sum it up. It looks like it'll still crash if Gangplank dies during his ult. It's more of a bug fix than anything. And then Haim, they only changed his refractor beams. That's the new one that came out last patch. The refractor beams are kind of interesting. I tried them, they were really bad. But with this, 10%, 40%, 80%, possibly you could have a carry Heim now. Items. It looks like Adaptive Helm, they added a frontline bonus to give them one mana when they were struck. That's interesting. That'll definitely make it slightly better. Guardbreaker got another nerf. That's kind of wild. Thieves' Gloves can't roll duplicates, okay? That's more of kind of a rework, I guess. Declaw Radiant got nerfed. 100% this is just here due to Cho'Gath. 
The Radiant Guard Breaker also got nerfed. Titan's Resolve Radiant actually went up. That's nice. I think that probably deserved a buff. Aegis, the support item, they changed the buff duration. Cool. Cup, buff. Banshee's Veil now grants 15% grants attack speed as well. Okay. I'm probably still never picking it, but that's cool. Zeke's Herald, I'm kind of covering it up, but it also got buffed to 35% attack speed. And Mort's actually the one who's covering up the ZZ Rot change, but it looks like they just adjusted the taunt range. Augment changes. Adrenaline Rush, I didn't ever really pick that before. That is your Juggernaut Augment. So that got buffed. You get Darius and Satin now instead of Warwick, and then the threshold goes up to 60%. Binary got nerfed. It doesn't grant components anymore. Built Diff 2 and 3 both got buffed. That one probably deserved. Built Diff's always one that's really hard to play around, but normally at the very beginning of sets, they have it really high up there, and then towards the end, it goes down. Caretaker's Ally got buffed. Now it grants one copy of the unit immediately. Okay, I'm down. I guess they learned from changing it to a three cost. They definitely don't need to do that. Defensive dash. That's our challenger augment. That one definitely needed a buff. It felt bad even when you were playing. Now, Gifts of the Fallen got nerfed again. This might make Gifts of the Fallen untakeable. It'll definitely be much lower on my list. Item grab, grab bag gains gold. Who cares? Lucky Gloves now gives two gloves instead of three. So you only get one copy of Thieves Gloves. And a lot of the time you're not going to be able to slam two Thieves Gloves immediately. That was probably the reason they had to do that. They added in the ability to get Lucky Gloves later at 3-2 and 4-2. What if I'm playing Twisted Fate? If I'm playing Twisted Fate and then adding that ability in, I mean, it's probably a very small percentage of the time, that, but that's going to give some people auto wins by playing Twisted Fate and then hitting that at 3-2. Money, money, money. Cool, you just get your money earlier. Pays to learn, now grants more experience. They learned not to give it more money. Perfected Repetition did get buffed. They needed that with Multicasters. Petricide Shackles also got a buff. That one, a little bit weird. So I looked at the stats for this one, and I think I brought it up on a recent video. But in the early ranks, like if you're playing in bronze, silver, gold, Petricide Shackles was actually one of the best combat augments as far as average placement. It was like 3.4, but then whenever you got up to diamond and master and above, it was back to normal, like 4.3. Shuriman's legacy is now gone, so you don't have the Shuriman augment anymore. Tactician's tools, now you're gonna get a component anvil along with your spats, that's cool. Total domination, that one not getting like, I was okay leaving that as is. That one getting a buff by 2%, maybe they needed it to keep up with Shuriman, but I was completely fine leaving Total Domination as is. And I know Mort's covering it up, but Vampiric Blades also got nerfed. So the augment that's supposed to help with rogues also got nerfed, rogues got nerfed, and then graves got nerfed individually. All right, so now we're gonna go into some of the small changes. Six Invoker got buffed. So now they're going to be giving 20 manas to all of the units. Strategist got buffed. That, I think, is going to make the Strategist plus uh, Bilgewater comp much better. Because normally you end up playing 5 Bilge, 4 Strategist in that comp. Very interested to see how that goes. Void, Rift Herald's now faster and will move to a correct target if the target dies during whenever she's trying to get it ready. That one's just a slight buff to Void. All right, small changes to our one cost champions. Cass got nerfed, deserve. Cho feels like a net neutral. I don't feel like this is actually a nerf. The 35 at tier one makes it kind of okay. It's just 35 health all the time. So I feel like this is just net neutral, not really actually a nerf. Jin, now he doesn't have drop off as much, which is awesome. That means he's gonna be better to reroll. Mal's, you can't see it, but they just updated it to where he won't miss as much whenever the targets are moving, which I have a lot of videos where he just whiffs completely on moving targets. Milio got buffed, definitely well-deserved. I kind of wish they had done more with Milio. I want Milio to be a carry. And then two to three costs. So Soraka got a nerf. That one definitely deserved. Nico got a nerf. So Soraka and Nico getting nerfs here makes that Bastion Invoker comp worse. But then Karma got a buff. So maybe now you're just more focusing on rerolling your Karma. And then Twisted Fate, of course, got nerfed. Well deserved. And then Zaya got nerfed and looks like Shadow Isles Rise got bug fixed. 
Then we got a whole bunch of bug fixes here. I'll let you go to Mort's video and look at those if you want. I'm not going to go through each individual one. So just kind of to sum it all up, the things that got nerfed the most were Ionian Vanquishers. Ionian got a nerf. Vanquisher got a nerf. We saw Zaya got a nerf. Set got a nerf. They did buff Jin, And then we had Rogues. Rogues got nerfed. And then also Graves got nerfed and their Augment got nerfed. But then we had Shirima that actually got buffed as well as there was an Azir buff in the last patch, and then Talia got buffed in this patch, along with Nautilus, even though I did realize that with Set getting nerfed, maybe that double trouble comp isn't as bad, but you could also make a debate that you should just play double trouble with Talia and Nautilus now, which also makes it harder to hit, so it's probably fine. And then of course, Bilgewater got a big change. But the ones that I immediately am looking at going into this patch are gonna be how is the Strategist Bilgewater comp now? Since Strategist also got a buff, Strategist and Bilgewater both got buffed. So how is that going to work? And then how good is Shuriman now? What happens if I go into an Ascension comp? I, I love playing Azir, so I'm very happy if it is good again. But still, Azir is also a Strategist, so we might run into that meta where those are heavily contested. Of course, you never know what's going to happen with the meta. People find new things all the time. But immediately, those are the things that I'm trying to look at are just Strategist Bilge and then Shereman Vertical, just because I love playing that. And of course, Cho Reroll is still going to be around. They didn't make any significant nerfs to any of the units. So I think Cho Reroll is still in a fine place. But if you enjoyed the video or have any comments about how you think this patch is going to go, make sure to let me know down below. You want to say hi, Rose? Tell everybody bye, Rose.